Brian Murphy here along with uh, Jeremy Fowler on day one of uh, Vikings training camp. A lot of news to get to, a lot of interesting storylines kind of developing early on. Why don't we get to the, the main news first. Adrian Peterson, as expected, on the physically unable to perform list. The active pup list for those scoring at home yep. basically means he's day to day. Uh, is he still recovering from his knee injury? What is the, the real impact of that? right now for him and for the team. Yeah, well last I checked, Adrian Peterson was a $36 million investment, as in 36 million guaranteed in his contract that he signed last year. Good timing. So they want to be very careful with this guy's left reconstructed knee. It's only really seven months removed from that, that hit that he took in Washington. So, you know, it, it's still early in the process. I know Adrian really wants to get going. I think that he, he's always had this otherworldly athleticism. He wants to get out there and play, but the Vikings have placed him officially on that pup list physically and able to perform knowing that they can bring him back at any time really you know if he's ready to go in three days or he's ready to go in 13 days or even longer they can kind of stretch him out a little bit feel out a situation let him train kind of in the background and get Toby Gerhardt all the snaps in the meantime I think it's the right play for the Vikings and it seems like a win-win situation because you're going to get uh, Toby Gerhardt now in his yeah. third season he came in looking in phenomenal shape yeah. he's obviously going to get a lot more looks they're going to need him probably early in the year to take a little bit more of the load yeah. do you see Peterson playing maybe in two preseason games how much action do you see because he's going to need to absorb contact that's the one thing he hasn't yeah. done throughout the seven months is take some hits on that knee He's pretty confident he's going to line up on September 9th against Jacksonville. Right. How much is he going to have to take in preseason or at least in practice uh, from a contact uh, perspective? Right, and that's a good question because I don't even know if the Vikings know at this point. I mean, they're still feeling this out. No matter how good a rehab goes, how smooth it's been for Adrian, and by all accounts he's had a great rehab, you still don't know how that body's going to react. Like when you take that first hit, I could see them maybe playing him in the last preseason game or even those, those last two and still not playing him opening day, you know, just to, just to give him a chance to really recover. You know, they have a relatively easy schedule those first two games right. against Indianapolis and Jacksonville. Starting with Jacksonville September 9th, they can give Gerhardt the reps. He can be that bridge before he comes back. I still think maybe week three would be a perfect target for him. And really, there's there's too much at stake right now, right. too much money and too much on the field for really right. to, to put him at risk. Yep. Uh, on the other side, you have uh, Percy Harvin sort of uh, – you know, made a lot of news in the offseason, made a lot of news, especially at minicamp back in June, uh, you know, expressing some vague unhappiness, yep. uh, demanding a trade, skipping out on a workout. He addressed the media today for the first time, and uh, you had a chance to kind of sit in on that scrum. Yep. Where would you say things are with him, both with the team, uh, with him on the field, and also just maybe him with uh, Coach Frazier? Right. Well, it's clear he wants to suppress any distraction. You know, I think that he successfully did that in the sense of saying that he, he's, you know, the past is the past he's ready to play football move on that he's a happy camper right now and I think that's half the battle for the Vikings um, you know he, he could have maybe spoken a little more candidly about the situation you know I asked him several ways about trying to address the past clarify the issue at hand what the root of the problem was why he missed a minicamp practice only to return the next day um, which seemed to fuel the, the trade speculation and, and he really didn't want to get into all that which is probably expected how convenient right but you know he spoke several times which I thought was interesting about his relationship with coach Frazier and how close they are and how he really looks to him almost like a father figure. So Frazier seems to be the glue in this situation, but it's a very strange situation. And a storm could brew later on. It's it's unpredictable. Right. And he's, you know, how much are they going to get him the ball? How right. much is that going to translate into what he can produce on the field and right. what he can garner in a contract? I mean, it's it's a storyline that deserves to be uh, to watch throughout. Yep. Um, one of the things that I think Frazier's, uh, what I found interesting is uh, the way he's trying to manage expectations, right. but also not tamp them down too much. I mean, right. last year, this is a team that finished 9 and, and 26 the last two seasons, so with some inflated expectations. Right. They're coming in this season, no one expects them to do much, especially in the competitive uh, NFC North. Yep. But I also think Frazier's been pretty blunt in uh, saying that, look, you know, the NFL is such a turnover league, yep. there's anything can happen, and hey, I don't want you guys buying into the fact that everybody thinks you're going to be four and twelve. If you buy into that, then what are we down here for in the first place? And what do you what do you make of how he's trying to, if not predict a playoff berth, at least temper expectations? It's going to be another losing season. Right, and he's certainly trying to set the tone here these first two days in Mankato. I thought the money quote from his press conference was when he was talking about players maybe being resigned to their fate of what the national media thinks of them being, you know, a three-win team or a five-win team. Not that every player feels that way, but maybe he can sense some of the negative energy. He said, we're trying to eradicate that way of thinking. I thought that was interesting because, you know, he's addressing the problem up front. He's saying that, look, we have to believe in ourselves or else why are we here, right. you know? And that's half the battle for him right now. That's a challenge. 
you know, for a team that, if you're, if you're Jared Allen or Kevin Williams or one of these veterans, you say, okay, we, we came off three wins last year. I don't know if we did a whole lot to drastically get better, but I think Frazier thinks we were close in a lot of games last year. Plus, I think we've shored up depth in the secondary. We've shored up depth on the offensive line. Those should be stronger points, at least. Maybe not team overall strengths, but stronger points that they can lean on, you know, assuming they avoid a barrage of injuries. So, yeah, there is some optimism that he's trying to sell, certainly. And, and you know, he's got a case in some ways. And it's a young team, so he's going to need that veteran leadership to not basically check out and right. maybe take care of their own right. business. He's going to have to set an example for a lot of young players who are not only just trying to yeah. acquiesce to the uh, – or, or just to the, uh, the NFL world, but just, yeah. just trying to – be a competitive team in a in a tough division. So right. yeah, a lot of things to a uh, lot of things to follow. Obviously, we're we're heading into our first practice this afternoon, uh, so we'll be checking in again for Mankato uh, for Jeremy Fowler and Brian Murphy. See you soon.